guys, welcome to Red 50. Thank you for tuning into another video. If you're new to the channel, thank you for stopping by. Make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. So in today's video, I've got my buddy's 2016 Mustang GT. In this review, we're going to be taking a look at the exterior of this 2016 Mustang GT. Talk about all the mods he's done. He's got a pretty extensive list for all the mods from power, suspension, and appearance as well. And we'll take it for a spin, listen to the beautiful Corsa Extremes too. Can't wait for that. All right, so we've got the front of this 2016 Mustang GT with the RTR lights. There's an RTR grill and the set of lights as well. Um, he's got tons of mods. He's got a crazy build, so I'm going to have him basically go all over the mods you can see the rtr wheels here really nice wing so the stance on this car is really nice if you look at it from here it's got 285s on the back and he is lowered as well so you got course extremes kind of like mine but without the active exhaust we're going to get some sound clips as well all right let's get the exhaust clip on these course extremes <laughs> I'm gonna move a little bit further away. He's gonna do a full rev. Let's go. My name's Tim. Um, went to high school Red 5 um, So this is a 2016 Mustang GT. Um, I have the RTR upper and lower grills. Um, I have RTR wheels all around, um, 255 up front and 285 in the rear. Um, you probably had uh, a quick peek at the spoiler there. That's a Cervini's C pedestal uh, spoiler painted shadow black. Yeah, you got a lot of appearance mods. What about the suspension? I feel like um, you've got a bunch of stuff going, going yeah, on with so that I'll too. I'll start from up front. So I have J&M camber uh, caster plates. I have a J&M bump steer kit. I have J&M bearing tension links and I have a Steeda lateral link that uh, corrects the geometry of the car after being lowered. In the <laughs> rear, I have BMR uh, Camber links. I have Super Pro bushings for the lower control arm, and all uh, front and rear. I have the Ford um, track handling pack spring and dampeners, and I have the Ford track um, front and rear sway bar. Uh, one other thing I had on there is the CP005 kit from BMR. It's basically it stops wheel hop um, in the rear. With all these suspension mods, I have to ask: Do you track this car? Yes, I do. Um, love going to Summit Point and uh there is another track event that i go to at dominion raceway okay and how do you think it handles compared to the stock one we had so after all these mods do you notice a significant difference the base mustang had a lot of body roll um after the ford track handling pack install um it was improved but with the uh, other aftermarket um suspension mods i added the turn in is a lot sharper and a lot more predictable and confidence inspiring all right, so let's talk about the power mods on your Mustang because obviously you've got it completely decked out in terms of suspension. I have to imagine you've got a lot of power mods going on here as well. Uh, tuned by Lund, uh, currently I have the E85R tuned installed at the moment. Um, I have a JLT 2015 Mustang GT intake. Um, I have a 2018 intake manifold. Um, I have four racing uh, LU47s in there for uh, support the E85. I also have, of course, the extreme cat back. Now with all those mods, have you had a dyno tuned or just dynoed to see how much power you're making? The stock ones obviously make 435 to the crank, so I'm kind of curious what you're making with all these mods. Yeah, so with all the mods and an E85, um, I made 413 to the wheel. All right, guys, so we're going to be driving the 2016 Mustang right now. Um, it's got E85. That's my first time driving an E85 car, so it's going to be interesting. And, of course, it's got power mod. So I want to see how it compares to my 2019 Mustang GT, which is pretty much bone stock. Like even drive 
this is a lot more responsive than my car is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This probably has to do with the tune or yeah. E85 itself. Because mm -hmm. it, the 2019, I think 20, I guess even on 2015 and up, like the drive mode is just so sluggish. Yeah. It's almost like two different cars when you switch to sport mode. Oh yeah, definitely. This one, I feel like you don't really need to do that. Brakes are like so good. As soon as you tap on them, they just stop. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's the Brembo's and the semi-metallic pads. Yeah. So that's why it squeals, because you don't have to tap them too hard. Yeah. So not, there's not enough heat in it. Do you have to replace them pretty often no. with your track crews? No. Uh, well, if you, I have special track pads for them. Oh, uh, so you just swap them out? Yeah. And like in terms of ride quality, I don't feel that much of a difference compared to mine. It almost rides like it's stock. Yeah, just an OEM suspension like feel. Yeah. But that's one of the things I'm afraid of. Like if I lower my car, I won't be able to take on road trips because it's going to be like really uncomfortable. Yeah, that's kind of why I stuck with the Ford track handling pack because even though it's known to be like pretty aggressive, everyone said it was like daily one. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's mainly why I went for it. Does it change the feeling a lot more if you switch it to sport mode, or is it pretty much like this? It's similar. I similar. Mean, you switch it, you get a feel for it. I always, nowadays, I typically only drive in, in sport mode, and I just do manual shifting. Yeah. As you, you don't have to row through ten gears. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that is very true. It's really annoying when you're on the highway, put in sport mode, and I want to downshift. 10, 9, 8, 7. Eight. Yeah, that, that is a lot of. Uh, I feel like it's definitely more responsive, and even the turning compared to mine, mine has a lot more body roll than this. <laughs> yeah. Paddles are pretty responsive, too. I thought the six-speed automatic, like at least the ones I've driven, I don't know if it's because of the tune, they weren't all that responsive. Like there was a noticeable lag, mm -hmm. but this one is pretty instant. Yeah, it's pretty crisp and uh, the line pressure, so it feels a little harsher. Like the shifting feels a little harsher. Yeah. A lot of people used to complain about that to the one. It was like, hey, this is like too harsh. You're not used to it. <laughs> like just suck it up. <laughs> <laughs> I have to get used to the brakes. Yeah, I just tap on them and the car just stops. Yeah, they're very touchy. Through the performance pack one, or maybe even better with all your suspension mods. Yeah, I actually haven't driven a performance pack one car. I imagine it's about the same, or if not slightly better. It yeah. The, the turning response is definitely going to be better because I think those lateral links, because it shortens the uh, wheel turning, so it just definitely feels a lot sharper. Yeah, I feel like Sport and Drive. Sport is more responsive, but I like how you can still, you know drive it in the normal mode and still be very responsive compared to the 2019 and up. Like mine is like very sluggish. Anytime I want to have fun, I have to switch it to sport mode. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, actually, I'm not entirely sure. I know they tune 4S, but I think for the autos, they might also tune for D, just for people who go to the drag strip and they yeah. just want to mash the pedal. Yep, yep. So that might be why it still feels pretty responsive. RPM it just like holds. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it'll definitely uh put you back into the back of the seat. <laughs> and it's like really responsive with the kick down. You get on the gas and an instant kick down. Like 
like this, yep. and it really puts you back in the sea. Oh yeah, it'll whip you back for sure. Like I was expecting like a mild like four or five k RPM mm -hmm. oh, pull, yeah. but no, <laughs> it was like all the way to seven. Has the red line been increased now because yeah. of the tune? Yeah, because the tune in the 2018 is so it's, I think, 78.50. 78.50? Okay. Yeah. Well guys, that concludes my review of Tim's 2016 Mustang GT. I have to say in terms of handling, it's a night and day different. There's just so much body roll of mine compared to his, which is like really sharp with his turning. In terms of power, I want to say it's about give or take the same. I do like because the fact that he has tuned the D or the drive mode, basically the normal drive mode, is a lot more responsive than my 2019 Mustang GT is because if I leave mine in drive, it's very sluggish. I have to put it in sport mode if I want to have fun. Whereas his, you can pretty much leave it in drive and still gonna do a really responsive downshifts and just kind of goes as soon as you press the gas. But yeah, that's about it. If you've got a cool car in DMV area and you want me to review it, be sure to hit me up on Instagram or just comment on YouTube video and we can definitely meet up and do a review of your car. If you enjoyed this review, make sure you smash that like button. Comment below what you think about the Gen 2 versus Gen 3 Coyote. And as always, subscribe to Red 5.0 for more videos.